there's this site in the heart of the most creative neighborhood in the world. And it's about to be turned into a park. And this is the moment that everyone is coming together to decide what's going to become of that park. And we have an idea for it. If you had the opportunity to do something here, what would you do? The spirit of the project is encouraging people to think really creatively and out of the box about what could be done with these industrial relics, which at first glance kind of look like they should be demolished. But if you take a closer look, you can see all sorts of possibilities. Every single square inch of the city is owned, is managed, has been decided. When we found this site, we, th we thought, wow, here's an opportunity to actually shape a piece of city. It's easy for a lot of people to dismiss the idea of saving these things when they just see them from afar. But just standing here, being surrounded by staircases and the shadow and light and the sounds, the opportunity feels so immense. As a baseline, we want people to know this exists. We want people to have the opportunity to you know, see for themselves, experience for themselves, and then decide, do we want this? Do we want a lawn? Do we want something else? When I first went to see the tanks, it's just this strange piece of nature on top of this piece of industrial relic. And it was just magical. And the tanks themselves represent just 3% of the total area of the park. But they too are all open spaces. So we're not removing any open space. We just want to create more different kinds of green spaces. These industrial vestiges are, have such negative association. The community really experienced a lot of environmental degradation over the years. It's logical that the, there's a sensitivity around that. And yet, there's such an incredible amount of science behind the fact that this can be effectively cleaned. First of all, if you had to clean it up completely, that would be tens of thousands of trucks. And so that's the, you know, part of the analysis is saying, um, not only how do you clean it up so you know that it's safe, but how, do you, how does it affect the community? What is the most effective way to remediate the site so that this neighborhood can happen more quickly, that this park can be built? The tanks are incredibly robust structures, and they were designed to hold vast volumes of very heavy material. I mean, these things are really built, and they're built to last a long time. One could be a theater, and one could be a playground, and I mean, one could be a swimming pool, and one could be uh, perhaps the, uh, the oyster production facility. The, the idea that it would be a mix of culture and environment and community. This is an opportunity that, you, it's not going to come around a second time. This is it. If, if we miss this opportunity, there is no second one. And I think all, all we're really asking is to be heard, right? That's all we really want is a fair hearing of it. And, I, and it just doesn't seem that we've had that chance so far. We've been advocating for this for so many years, but the city just put out a statement through Green Pointers that these things are coming down, like, imminently. I want to say, hidden in plain sight in the beating heart of Williamsburg is a breathtaking relic of Brooklyn's industrial waterfront. Yeah. These structures are in imminent danger of being demolished without the c consent of the wider community. Sign this petition and ask the city to halt demolition and give New Yorkers a chance to learn about these tanks and the value they could bring to Bushwick Inlet Park and the community. Yeah, the plan is either like to demolish the tanks and have open green space, which we argue you're, you're going to have lots of, or keep the tanks and have this sort of be a feature of the park that speaks to the history of the yeah, you know awesome. of the industrial waterfront. I went to high school with my friend right there, high school. Hi. <laughs> Could we, like, How long have you some been people about have lived with these structures before they were de decommissioned, and they were just examples of environmental degradation. The typology of these structures is so unusual. I think it requires an extra degree of creativity and kind of really thinking about what could be done here. We see the possibility of breathing new life into them and actually transforming these layers of history into actually something that produces life. How to know my heart could be so yearning. How to da 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 Gonna take a sentimental journey. Sentimental journey home.